Welcome to today's service. Today is Trinity Sunday and a very good morning to you all. It's lovely to have you with us again and we hope that you'll be blessed as we worship, pray and look at God's word together. We have some more members of our church family taking part from their homes. Um, Diane's going to be leading the kids talk in a minute here uh, and we have the pleasure of welcoming back Jack Wilson uh, who'll be joining us from his home and sharing his thoughts on today's Bible passage. As a church family, can I continue uh, to encourage you to pray for those in our parish and further afield who are struggling, unwell or grieving at this time. And a quick reminder that the church service is now available uh, over the telephone for those in our church family who don't have access to the internet. So if you know someone who'd like to avail of this service, please pass on the number which is currently at the bottom of your screens. I understand that the calls are free over the weekend and in the evenings if you're calling from a landline. Um, notices. For those who wish to continue their weekly offerings, again, just to remind you, there's still two ways of doing this. There is the online mechanism. Uh, if you'd like to contribute in this way, uh, details can be found on the parish website, www.moiraparish.org.uk. But if you prefer not to pay online, can I encourage you to continue setting aside your weekly offering until we're able to resume normal services. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated at this time. If you need a rector, please contact the parish office where Joanne Warwick will be able to help you out. The parish office is open from 9.30 until 1.30 Monday to Friday. Uh, the phone number is 028. 92617136. And if you're watching online, the number is at the bottom of your screen. So please take note. And if you need to contact the office, just pick up the phone and give us a call. And finally, if there's anything that you need at this time, both pastorally or practically, please do give us a call and we will try our very best to help you out. Turning our focus to our Heavenly Father, let's draw together and confess our sins to him. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. The Collect for today, this being Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. For you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I'm now going to hand over to Diane, who's going to give us today's Kids Talk. So, boys and girls, this morning, I'm going to talk to you about God's love. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it says, if I have no love, I achieve nothing. Nothing. Rien, nichts, nada, zilch, zero. Nothing. Now I have a question for you boys and girls. Has anyone noticed anything different about some of the men in our community in the last 10 weeks or so of lockdown? Maybe, maybe this is just in our house, but is there anything different about the appearance of your, any of your dads or granddads or uncles? A lot of them are working from home and they're not going out very much. Is there anything that you've noticed that's different? Well, about six weeks into lockdown, I noticed that one morning I woke up and I realised 
that I was married to a man with a beard. Now, this didn't just happen overnight. Um, it kind of developed over a number of weeks. But now, my husband, Jonathan, is sporting a very bushy beard. Did this happen to anybody else? Apparently, growing a beard is something that's very easy to do. In fact, you just have to not do something. You just have to not shave. And because my husband Jonathan is sporting a lovely beard, he actually isn't shaving and he didn't notice that I managed to get something out of the bathroom without him noticing. And that is shaving foam. And I'm going to use this shaving foam, boys and girls, to illustrate today God's love. I want you to imagine that this shaving foam equals love. Now, if you were all in church this morning, I would ask for a volunteer to do this. But I'm going to have to just do this myself. Have a look at how this shaving foam expands and fills the whole jar. Remember, I want you to imagine that this is like love. And as I'm filling up the jar, you can see that actually the shaving foam is really no good inside the can. It has to be outside the can to help you. This shaving foam, when it's out, can give you a really good shave. But inside the can, it can do nothing for you. And this is a little bit like love. The love that you have on the inside doesn't do any good staying on the inside. The love that you have has to come out a bit like this shaving foam. And like this shaving foam, it has to be overflowing like this. In fact, you can see that this jar can't really contain all the foam because it's overflowing. It's a bit like the love being expressed in our lives. The shave is much smoother with the foam. Have you ever watched your dad or somebody um, when they're shaving and they put on the foam and it's really nice and smooth with the foam? But have you ever seen anyone shave without shaving foam? It's not good. It's not fun and you can get lots of little cuts and nicks and it's really not good. This is what life is like without love. With the foam, it's really nice and smooth. And in life, when you have love being expressed and it's overflowing towards other people, life goes so much more smoothly. Think about your life during lockdown. When you show God's love to that people in your house, your brothers and sisters, or your mom and dad, or anybody else in your house, things go a lot more smoothly within your home. Life becomes easier with love. Living your life showing God's love is like shaving with the foam. It's just easier. Also, like the foam in the jar, love expands and it grows us. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. So over the next week, when you see your dad's big bushy beard, or when you see someone shaving, I want you to remember the shaving foam. And I want you to remember that the foam equals love. Life is smoother when we show God's love. And like the foam, it's no good inside the can. Love has to come out. And when it comes out, like the shaving foam, 
it expands and it fills the space to overflowing, just like God's love to us. Thank you, Diane. And my beard's getting a bit bushy uh, myself as well at the moment. Um, Ellen Dugan is now going to bring us today's reading. Today's reading is John chapter 16, verses 5 to 15. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I'm going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Thank you, Ellen. Elaine is now going to lead us in prayer, and then Jack will be sharing his thoughts with us this morning. Uh, good morning everyone. Let us pray. We want to thank you for this opportunity to be able to pray freely. We thank you that you are with us, guiding us, supporting us, helping us make decisions and keeping us safe. Remind us Lord not to take this for granted but to come before you in prayer without ceasing as your word tells us to. We pray for all the churches, the many support groups and all the other charities working in our community for all the leaders and volunteers who are supporting our community, donating, reaching out to neighbours, those who are sick, in hospital or in need. We especially thank you and continue to pray for our parish of St John's, for those in positions of leadership, for Matt, Simon and Yuan, as they tend to our needs and lead us every Sunday in worship, for the technology and patience which allows us to hear your word meet up with friends, family and study groups. We also pray for those in hospital and those who are grieving, for families and friends who are finding the current situation difficult when they cannot be with their loved ones. We remember especially our Rector Joanne and her family. The Psalms tell us, you heal the brokenhearted and bandage their wounds. Lift them up, Lord, as they face this week and the weeks to come. We remember our children this week, Lord, as they continue learning from home. We pray for patience and understanding. And with this, we especially remember parents who have taken on the role of teachers, which can be challenging, especially in the last month of the school year. Keep all our children focused and give our parents the staying power that they need. The end of the school year is a time when our children move to new classes, new teachers and new schools. We pray for all who are moving schools this year, from nursery to primary, from primary to secondary, and from secondary to university or to the workplace. Be with them all, Lord, and help them to call on you when times seem uncertain. Let them feel your hand upon their lives, that they would be able to fully trust and rely on you to guide their steps. Help those making tough decisions to discern what your will is for them and to follow in the path you have led out for them. We pray for the world at this time when life stands still for many and nothing seems certain. As they pray for us, we continuously pray, pray for Bishop Wilson and the people of Eva as their COVID numbers increase daily and their resources are so limited. We also remember to pray for, pray for the people of Kaoli that the days for girls team visited this time last year Guide their hands, Lord, as they use their skills to make masks for the elderly. Equip them, equip them with unwavering faith and trust in you. Continue to uphold them and give them the endurance to continue to spread your word and show love to others around them in need. Lord, we thank you that you love us unconditionally and that you're, you love without prejudice. 
Help us to learn from you and strive to show this love daily to those around us. In our words and in our actions, we pray for the reconciliation of people and communities that you would eventually bring a sense of stability, equality and comfort to our world. O oh God, enlighten our minds with truth, inflame our hearts with love, inspire our will with courage, enrich our lives with service. Pardon what we have been, sanctify what we are, and order what we shall be, and yours shall be the glory and ours the eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we finish with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. My name is Jack Wilson, for those of you who don't know me. And I want to thank Matt for inviting me to be part of this service with you guys this Sunday morning. Now last Sunday, Bishop David preached to the whole diocese talking about Pentecost Sunday and how the Holy Spirit empowered and emboldened the disciples to preach the good news on that Sunday and to build his church. And now this Sunday, I would love to look a little bit more at what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. And we're gonna be doing that this morning by looking at John chapter 16, verses five to 15. So before we get into it, just a bit of context as to what's going on here. What's happening is we're going back to before Pentecost, we're going back before the crucifixion to Jesus in the last night with his disciples. He's just eaten a meal with them. Judas has gone off to get the Pharisees and the soldiers to arrest Jesus. And Jesus has told his disciples, the, the, the 11 that are remaining, that he is going to be leaving them soon. And don't, they don't quite understand what he means, but they're confused and they really don't understand. And so Jesus comforts them and says, look, I know that you are sad that I am going, but it is better that I should go. It's better that I should leave you. And I know when any time I have read this passage, I've read Jesus saying that I have been I've been shocked um, by Jesus' words here. To think that it is better that Jesus should go. You can almost imagine the disciples thinking here, what helper could possibly be better than Jesus' perfect presence, his teaching, his ministry here on earth? What could be better than that? But what Jesus knows is that if only once he has been crucified, he has been raised from the dead, and he has been exalted at God's right hand in glory, could the Holy Spirit come? Could the helper come, the advocate come? You see, Jesus could only be in one place. Yes, he was fully God and fully man, but he was a person. And he could only be on one place on earth. Yet God's mission for a new humanity, a new community of believers was a global one. One that started in Judea, went to Samaria and went to the ends of the earth. And therefore, that while Christ could be with his disciples, if he were to go, then the Holy Spirit could be in all believers everywhere. Instead of a few believers having Jesus present with them, all believers could have the Father and the Son present in them through the Holy Spirit. And we need to only look at how the disciples acted in the last few chapters of, of all of the Gospels. When the Pharisees and the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, they fled. They were terrified. Peter had enough courage to, to follow the man who arrested Jesus, but when asked if he knew him, he denied Jesus three times. These were weak and scared men. But then Pentecost came and they were emboldened, they were empowered and filled with the Holy Spirit. 
to preach the good news, to share the gospel and to build the church from that day. So for those of us who believe in God and who have the Holy Spirit inside of us, what does that mean? What does that mean in our lives? Well, the first thing that it says in verses 8 to 11 of this passage we're looking at today is it says that the Spirit convicts us of three things. The first thing it says is that the Spirit convicts us of our sin. The most basic sin that we have refused to believe in Christ. Our most basic sin is that we try to make ourselves the masters of our own lives rather than putting our lives in the trust of Jesus. And anything we do on our own is ultimately for ourselves. Therefore the Holy Spirit convicts us of these attitudes. The Holy Spirit convicts us of this sin. And it's only through this revelation can we truly recognise how sinful we are and how we need to turn to God in repentance. The second thing that the Holy Spirit convicts us of is righteousness. And righteousness means to be made right before God. And the Holy Spirit shows us that we have no righteousness on our own. That only Christ is righteous. And it is only through his work on the cross, his death and his resurrection and ascension that we can have righteousness. That we can be made right before God. And so often in our lives we are prone to think, I'm not that bad. To be honest, I'm, I'm actually thinking I'm doing okay at the minute. And it takes the Holy Spirit to convict us of our own righteousness and to show us that no matter what we do, no matter how many good works we do, that does not make us right before God. We are unrighteous and only through the blood of Jesus can that be changed. Finally, in regards to judgment, the Holy Spirit shows us that Satan has been judged. That he has lost and while he thrashes now in his death pangs and, and causes temptation and evil in this world, when Jesus comes again to make all things new, Satan, will be con Satan who has been condemned will be destroyed. However, the Holy Spirit not, does not just convict us of our sins to bring us into a life with God and to bring us back into step with God, but the Holy Spirit also guides us. Well, when we come to faith and the Spirit enters us, we become a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. We still feel that tug, that temptation from our old life, our old way of living. And yet the Spirit emboldens us and empowers us to live a life in the Spirit, to resist the flesh. As Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 to 18 says, So I walk by the Spirit. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The Spirit empowers us to resist the flesh, to know the difference between what is of God and what is of the flesh and to choose the right. However, verse 18 brings us to the next way the Spirit guides us when it says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. You see, while we have a new life in Christ, we are so prone to give in to those tugs, to give in to the temptations of our old way of living. And when we sin, when we feel Satan loves to remind us of our failures, to heap shame and unhealthy guilt onto us and whisper lies into our ears. And I know believers all over the world, I believe that all of us have experienced these whispers and lies that Satan tells us. When he tells us that we are not loved, that we are beyond God's grace, that we have out sinned the grace of God. Maybe those are familiar to you. Maybe you've heard those before in your ears. And here the Holy Spirit not only convicts us with a healthy guilt that leads us to repentance, but also while convicting us also becomes our defence. 
defense against Satan's lies by reminding us of God's promises, that his love for us is unfailing, that Christ died for us when we were at our worst. As it says in Romans chapter 8 verses 38 and 39, and I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God, neither life nor death, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries for tomorrow. Not even the power of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, and indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God as revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And finally, not only does the Spirit guide us in, in how to resist the devil, but as we were saying, this mission that, that the Spirit has is the same mission of Jesus, to share the gospel, to, to spread the good news throughout the earth. And so the Spirit also prompts us, often in little ways and sometimes in big ways. Perhaps we know a friend that is upset and the Spirit prompts us to go and pray with them. Maybe you're in a coffee shop and you just feel prompted or urged to pay for someone else's order in the shop. Or maybe you have a family member or a friend who doesn't believe in Jesus and you feel the Spirit prompt you to share the good news of Jesus with them. And the thing is, no matter how nervous we may feel at any of those things, and those are just a few small examples of all the ways that the Spirit prompts us in our lives. We know that God will bring us through them. He will empower us and embolden them, just like he did on the day of Pentecost. And just like he has been doing day after day with believers from that, that day. As it says in 2 Timothy 1.7, For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love and self-discipline. The Holy Spirit is power in our lives. The Holy Spirit empowers us not for our glory, but for God's glory. What I've hopefully shared by merely scratching the surface this morning is showing some of the incredible life-giving work that the Spirit does in our lives. You see, it is better that Jesus returned to heaven and sent his helper, his advocate, to us to be with us and in us. You see, the Holy Spirit was sent to do the same things that Christ was, continuing Christ's work on earth, but now through all believers. Christ was with the disciples. The Holy Spirit is with us and in us. Christ was the disciples teacher. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. Christ strengthened, admonished and encouraged the disciples. The Holy Spirit strengthens, admonishes and encourages us. Christ bore witness to himself and the Holy Spirit bears witness to Christ. And if we believe in Jesus, if we believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord and confess with our mouths that God raised him from the dead and we have that eternal life, the Spirit lives in each of us. So my thought and my challenge for all of us this week, as we think about the Holy Spirit and, and his work in our lives, is first of all, that we would ask God to convict us of our sins. That we would perhaps even, to help us with that, to read Psalm 51. And I will be doing this this week, read it and to pray through Psalm 51. To ask God to cleanse our hearts, to show us our sins and to renew a right spirit within us. And after that, to not only ask him to give mict us, but also to guide us this week. To help us to resist the devil, to resist the flesh. That as we read scripture, that the spirit would guide us to interpret it correctly. And that we would bring light in the dark places as the spirit prompts us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and grace. God, we thank you that you love us and that you sent us your Son to die for us. We thank you that death could not hold him, that you raised him from the dead. 
And as he went in the glory, you gave us another gift. You gave us your spirit to dwell within us as our guide, as our advocate, as our helper. God, we pray that this week that we would have a new understanding, a new acknowledgement of your spirit's work in our lives. That we would not resist it, but that the Holy Spirit would convict us of our sins, that he would lead us back into righteousness and a right path with you. God, and that you would guide us this week. You would protect us from all temptations of the flesh. You would protect us from the devil's lies when we feel. God, and that you would prompt us, God, to share your love and light and gospel wherever we may go. Pray all these things in your precious and holy name, the name above all names. Amen. Let's conclude today's service with the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. We hope that you enjoyed watching today's service online this morning or if you listen to it on your phones, we hope that you enjoyed it too. Please join us again next Sunday at 10 a.m. Until then, stay safe and God bless.
Christ within you. Christ be. Gomani and Cherna Hu, Agus go goodie she who. The Lord met the light to his face, and the goodness of his heart to be brecht upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. وباركك الرب ويحرسك نيك شن بان بوغو سوافي استراجه وسنيو فاسر فرنسير وساكا سلومينيز فاتا لوي بستت في خونكا يهوفا تيرموكم نندميلو يرتي ننكا سماد كوسي فويني على فيا